Okay, this is 61st question of code Q. I'll read out the question. In an LCR circuit as shown below, both switches are open initially. Now switch S1 is closed. S2 kept open. Q is the charge on the capacitor and tau equal to RC is the capacitor constant. Which of the following statements is correct? Now the point to be noted is that although they say that this is a LCR circuit, but the useful part is only the resistance and the capacitance. So the effector circuit becomes when the switch is closed then the charge grows with time as q equal to cv into 1 minus e k bar minus e by rc if you look at the first option p equal to rc charge will come out to be Cv into 1 minus e k power minus Rc upon Rc doesn't match with the option look at the second option P equal to 2 Rc then Q will be equal to Cv into 1 minus e k power minus 2 Rc upon Rc so it definitely matches with the option so second is the correct option Okay, this is question number 62 of code Q. It states a diode detector is used to detect an amplitude modulated wave of 60% modulation by using a condenser of capacity 250 pico in parallel with a load resistance of 100 kilo ohm. Find the maximum modulated frequency that could be detected by it. Now, we know that the condition is RC should lie between 1 by FM and 1 by fc now they are not asking about what is the limitation on the carrier wave frequency they are asking about the limitation on the frequency modulated wave frequency so we can say fm is much much less than 1 by rc which comes out to be 1 by 100 kilo ohm then 100 into 10 to power 3 multiplied by capacitance 250 picofarad 250 into 10 to power minus 12 farad which comes out to be 40 kilohertz. Now, of all the four options, if you look at this, then 5.31 is rejected. 5.31 megahertz is rejected because it is beyond the uh, limit limitation imposed by this. 10.62 megahertz is rejected because this is beyond the limitation imposed. And of the remaining two, 10.62 is maximum. So, the correct option is 10.62 kilohertz. Okay, the third question to <coughs> code Q is the supply voltage to a room is 120 volt. The resistance of the lead wires is 6 ohm. The watt bulb is already switched on. What is the decrease in voltage across the bulb when a 240 watt heater is switched on in parallel to the bulb? Let's try to see the equivalent circuit of this particular question. There is 6 ohm resistance. There is a bulb which is connected in series to it and there is 120 volt. The resistance of the bulb will be given by V square by T comes out to be 120 square upon 60 which is 241. The resistance of the heater will be V square upon power of the heater 120 square upon 240 ohm 240 watt comes out to be T ohm. So initially if we see the voltage, the voltage across any particular element in series will be directly proportional to the resistance of it. Means V1 will be 120 multiplied by uh, 240 upon 246 ohm. Later on, when there is a resistance connected in series in parallel with it, means 60 ohm connected in parallel with it, their equivalent resistances, this is 240 ohm, 
R equivalent comes out to be 240 into 60. upon 240 plus 60, we work it out, it comes out to be 48 ohm. So, V2 later on <laughs> will be 120 multiplied by 48 on 48 plus 6. So, if you look at this, the change in voltage will be V1 minus V2 is approximately 10 ohm, 10 volt sorry, and uh, the 10 volt means the closest option is the fourth question of code Q says a uniform cylinder of length L and mass M having cross sectional area A is suspended with its length vertical from a fixed point by a massless spring such that it is half submerged in a liquid of density sigma equilibrium position, the extension x naught of the spring when it is in the equilibrium position. Let us see the figure. There is a spring which connects to a cylinder which is partially dipped in a liquid. Now, in this situation, the liquid is going to exert a buoyant force and the spring is going to exert a spring force which will balance the weight of this thing. If we see the free body diagram, there is a kx naught acting in the vertically upward direction and there is a <coughs> buoyant force value will be sigma a l by 2 g and the weight of the cylinder mg acts in the downward direction means x naught plus sigma a l by 2 g in equilibrium will be equal to mg we are required to find out x naught pretty simple term that is mg minus sigma a l by 2 g on K. So, of four options, second is the correct option.